Hey everybody, welcome to or welcome back to Ogre Speed Shop. Today I'm going to talk about how to properly use a piston stop to find the accurate mark for your balancer for timing your motor. Uh, a lot of times you'll get a, you know, you might suspect that you have a bad timing mark. So this is a good way of finding or actually making a good um, timing mark on your balancer. So stand by and enjoy the video. All right, for this task, what we're going to use is the piston stops that I went over in one of my shorts of my Building Cars and Custom Tools series. So we're going to need one of these and some good old painter's tape to get this job done. And basically what it's going to be, we're going to be setting up, we're going to use my 69 Firebird and it's Pontiac 400 motor, mainly because it's really easy to see the tie marks over here. If you look down here, I got a nice big open space. I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and what we're going to do is basically pull number one piston. I'm going to use that to set up these marks, just like I was talking about. If you look down here, number one. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that number one out and we'll could be right back. All right, so the first thing we need to do is find top dead center on number one. I know you can't see me, but you can see right down here, my marks on there. That's actually when I was working on setting up timing to do timing control with my sniper, but I need a different distributor, a whole different ignition system basically to set that up. So just kind of ignore the marks that are on there right now. First thing I'm gonna do is crank the motor over by hand and find top dead center by doing the good old compression trick by putting your finger over the hole. And I'm already there, so. So basically we're gonna start right there and my zero mark is actually way down here. So if I bring it around to that, Okay, so right there is where the top dead center should be at. So as you can see, I got a mark right there and it's lining up with zero on here. I hope you can see that on the video. But so what maybe what we're gonna do is make sure we're gonna put some tape on there, rotate it back and forth and center it and find out if that mark is accurate with the timing for the, for the, for the motor. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is back that off so we can put the uh, put our piston stop into the motor. Okay, so as you can see, I got this tiny mark lined up zero to zero, but what I need to do is back it off now. And I'll show you why. Come over here, I'm gonna use this piston stop that I have right here. And it's just an old spark plug that I put a rod in the end of it to extend it into the piston area. So basically you're gonna thread that in there, but with it at top dead center, there's not enough room to do that. So you'll need to back it off. So as you can see, it won't even go, try to go in there at this, at this time. So I need to back it off just before top dead center so I can actually put that thing in there. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, so as you can see by my marks, because the original mark is way down there, you can see I backed it off far enough that I should be able to put that piston stop in now. So let's go ahead and see if we can screw that in. Slide it in there. Try not to cross thread your spark plug holes, obviously. And you just, okay, looks like I'm hitting it already, so we're gonna back it off just a little bit more. Okay, so backed off a little bit more. Now I should be able to go in here and screw this in the rest of the way. Maybe it's already in all the way. Let me get a spark plug socket just to try it. Okay, as you can see, it's spinning in. When it comes with a stop. Okay, so that's as far in as it'll go. At that point, everything should be closed. You shouldn't be anywhere near your valves being open or closed. So that's just your first, that's where you start at. So I got the piston stop in there now. Now what you want to do, I'm going to put you back up on the stand here.
Okay, so now you're just gonna, what we're gonna do at this point, I'm gonna get the tape out. I'm gonna put the tape on the timing, or the on the balancer now. So just stand by for that. Okay, so we're gonna take my tape and put it on there. So I have a good place to mark, and I can actually reach back in here and get this on here. I cut the two pieces of tape, a piece of tape in half because my balancer is thin. So let's go ahead and get that on there. It's not going to wrap all the way around. It's one in the vicinity of where it sh I think it should be. Okay, so now the tape's on there. Now we want to take and move until we can't move very any further. And you got to be careful doing this. You don't want to run into a piston or into, or you don't want to run hard into the piston. You don't want to hit a valve. So just turn it until it stops. Get a hard stop. Right about, right there's my hard stop. It will not go any further. And you see, I didn't put very much pressure on it. So now at this point, you want to take your marker. Okay, so now you want to take your black marker and where the zero's at, you want to mark right there. So that's your first mark. So that's going to be your outside area. So now we want to take and crank it backwards. Again, be very careful doing it this way so you don't, because you don't want to loosen your bolt for one. So you crank it backwards, and you know, go to the same, same thing until you feel it stop. It's going to be a solid stop of that piston. enough tape on there and right there just enough tape so that's where it stopped going the opposite or the next direct the other direction okay so now you want to go in and mark your right mark your mark right there okay so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that you're gonna crank it around you're gonna find the center point of those two marks on your tape and measure it with a tape with a ruler, which I'll show you here in a second. Now I'm gonna go back the other direction. Again, do this very slowly so that you don't slam into your piston. So this is my first mark right here. This is where we stopped the first time. I topped it center right there, bam. That's the end of that. So now if between this mark and the mark you made on the other side here is where your, your center line is going to be. And you want to measure between those two, and that'll give you your, your center line. So let me pull that piston stop out so we can see that top dead center. Just back it off a little bit. And pull this out. So we got full travel. Okay, so there's my first mark. Come around, and there's a the second mark. So you just got to measure between those two marks. Make sure you can see that mark go. So there's mark number two. So now you just want to measure between those two marks, and then divide it in half, and it'll give you your your center line. So we got a ruler. Okay, so from that mark to the other mark. It is more than six inches, or it's right at six inches. All right, so this measurement's a little over six inches, and I don't have a flexible six inch one, so I'm going to use this um, feeler gauge to mark zero, and I'll measure it off the car. Crank it over a little bit more so I can see better. Okay, 
So I mark it with my thumb. Okay. So there's going to be our measurements. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that with a ruler. And with that mark, we are at six and three eighths. So now we take six and three eighths and divide that in half. And that gives you three and what? Five eighths, I think. So we're at three. I'm sorry, six and it's three and three sixteenths or something like that. So it's gonna be pretty close. Let me just uh, get a rule I can use to measure them. Alright, so as you can see, I marked my mark between here at the center line between six and three eighths would be three and a sixteenth. So which is on this and on this ruler here it's gonna be you know, three and one eight seven five. So I just me basically measured that around to that area and mark my tape. Now, what we need to do now, we're going to peel that up and see where my my center line mark ended up at. So. I'm going to peel it up to right where my timing mark is. And if you look right there, they line up. See, there's my, there's my original timing mark, and there's the mark I made on my tape. So as you can see, this method works. So now I can go ahead and pull that off there. Take a look at how that how it lines up. So that's how you find that top dead center and make sure the mark is proper on your balancer. All right, so that concludes this video on using your piston stop and finding your proper top dead center on your balancer. So if you ever have a, a suspicion your, your balancer might be off, the, the timing marks might be off on your balancer, this is a good way of determining where your top dead center is at. So you can so use quick, this on any I just motor. want to go over the fact that, you know, I said you can use this on any motor. It obviously isn't gonna be something you use on a newer motor that's uh, cam and crank sensor driven or a coil on plug. This is mainly for older motors where you're not quite sure where all the parts came from. And you just wanna make sure that that balancer is correct for the motor and the timing mark's actually right on that balancer. So sorry about saying for all motors, not really all motors, but I just wanted to reiterate that. Go ahead and end it on that note. Just wanna say I appreciate your support on my channel. And if you have a comment, please leave it down below. I can, I, you know, I'll take any advice or any comments you want to throw at me. Um, leave a like down there if you enjoyed the video. And if you're not registered, or registered, yeah, cars, you know. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe down below. And enjoy your next video, and enjoy, and enjoy my next video. So again, I appreciate you being here, and enjoy the rest of your day.